Welcome back to another video in our Therm series. This time we will talk about how we can use Therm to calculate thermal bridge heat loss coefficients. Um, they're also called Psi values. If you're not familiar with the basic usage of Therm, please consider looking at the other two videos that introduce the basics of how to move around the software because it is a bit unusual. We'll not spend too much time in this tutorial on it. Before we get anywhere into the actual software, I would like to catch you up on the basic underlying principles that we use to obtain such Psi values. So we're talking about thermal bridging in wall corners here specifically, and the calculation of a Psi value for such an situation. So let's jump right into it. We begin with the definition of the U value. A U value is the conductance of a building component, such as a wall, that describes of how many BTU you're losing per hour, per square foot, and per Fahrenheit delta difference between the interior and the exterior. So if we want to apply this U value now to a wall element and calculate the overall heat loss per hour for such a wall, we multiply with the dimensions of that wall and then ultimately also with the temperature difference. So if we want to expand the problem set to a wall corner, in this case, we have a wall, the same wall type on both sides. We could then apply this U value to the north side corner and at the same time to the west side corner. But this introduces a little bit of an error that we actually make. So we can look at the specific section of this building component corner and investigate what's going on there. And to make this a linear process, a 2D process, we look at a block of one foot height and just the, make the legs of this construction three feet wide. So what we do actually here is we calculate the U value, all the area into the corner, and that would assume that we have a constant thermal heat loss along the interior edge and this is actually not what exists. So what we have in this case is that because we have much more exterior surface on this corner, there is more draw in the corner and the heat loss will start slowly to climb the further we move into the corner. So how can we capture that additional loss? Well, this is where Therm comes in. So Therm allows us to define a U tag for a boundary. And with this U tag, we can calculate an average heat transfer along the tag boundary. And the average U value in total comes to, because it's now a constant U factor, uh, it becomes in its total the same amount as the real flux, the one that increased towards the corner constitutes, uh, constitutes. So what are we doing with this? This is where it becomes interesting, at the same time, brilliantly simple. We assumed that we only use the normal U value. The average U value gives you the actual loss. So the difference between those two dimensions here is what comes out and leaves in my corner. We can define that value as the Psi value. So a linear loss factor that is happening in addition if we use constant U values all the way into the corner as our basic premise. We can use the heat loss. This is basically now a conductance of a corner, a linear conductance. It's defined as BTU per linear feet of this corner that exists per Fahrenheit and per hour. So using this linear coefficient, multiplying it with the actual length of the corner gives us the same total results 
as if we would use this full simulation. Okay, so I have meanwhile opened Therm. We are using version 7.8.58. This is close, if not the latest version. We can check a few options in our preferences tab. We use inch pounds, we use BTUs per inch per Fahrenheit um, square foot. In terms of drawing options, we will increase our canvas size to have at least 36, maybe 50 inches by 50 inches. We use snap settings that show the grid and snap the grid of one inches because we use very simple geometries and we can start drawing from here. We can zoom out by using um, shift, click and come out of a domain. I'm starting with the material that is uh, relatively simple. I will use a concrete um, heavyweight material and create a wall of eight inch thickness. It doesn't matter that you break the wall in, sips, in individual rectangles. What I want to make sure is that my block is eight by eight inches and defines the thickness of the wall. And you can usually look at the DX, DY down here. So we extend that wall to the right by another 36 uh, inches and do the same towards the bottom. 36 inches, 32, 4, 5, 36. This should be the length of those two legs. We can now zoom to the extent, control right click that gives us this in the middle again, and we define next the boundary conditions. Double click on the next item when you want to go directly into the dialog. We make it an interior vertical surface and we apply the interior side tag here, so the U factor surface tag. Here we want to measure the average U value that we find. Uh, at the same time, we can now go and click here and shift double click to the last leg. So that works across counterclockwise from the first to the last, selecting everything and can set this to an exterior winter boundary conditions. We do not set a surface tag because we only measure on the inside. Calculating this should give us the results that we see higher heat flux here in the corner. And if we look at the U values that we have, the U value in this case, we need to look at the total U value and it's an average U value of 0 0.715. If we want to compare that against the standard wall, the conductance will be probably lower because here we have an average U value that increases on the average because of the corner impact. You could do this in a separate file, or you could just do what I uh, usually use for simplicity of comparison. I add another material to the domain and set it as a super insulating material. And you may have seen that I have that up here a super insul come on a super insulator material what the super material does it has a very low conductivity and therefore acts like an adiabatic boundary condition for this joint connection here and with that i can create another material on the other side and let me make it just eight or like four it doesn't have the length is independent because it's average, but if I make it 12 uh, inches long and set it back to a normal wall, then I have the same conditions here. So this is my undisturbed wall and measuring the U value on the inside would allow me now to look at the wall U value. For this, we go back to boundary conditions. We can use the existing ones so that we don't have to set them again. But we now define here this as a double come on, double clicking it uh, gives me the dialog that I can set this to an interior vertical surface. And I use the tag wall now. So you want to use a different tag that we can compare to the same. And on the exterior, we set this simply to a exterior winter. We don't have a tag here either. All right. 
calculating the results. You see a little bit funky stuff going here, but that doesn't matter as long as your isotherms are perpendicular to your boundary here, which is the replication of an adiabatic boundary. But by doing this, it allows us to display both of the U values now in the same window. We set it to total length, and here you see it. The wall has a lower conductivity than the corner on average, which includes the thermal bridging effect in the corner. So for our math that we have to do now is we use this average U value that exists along this corner here and multiply it with the length of this to get the total loss that happens along. So the total BTUs per hour that leave this corner. We need to be careful. This is given in inches and we using feet or square feet here. And we can subtract then if we would have used just a normal U value that we have over here, which would have been correct maybe here until the first, until we get two feet towards the corner. But we subtract those two and that will be the addition that we can apply then to our C value. This is what I will show in a separate um, slide because we basically pull out the math that we need to do for that. Okay, let's analyze and dissect what we have done here in Therm. So we have modeled our corner and our wall to obtain the two different U values that we will be using throughout this analysis. First, we had the interior side U value so the conductance, the average conductance along this edge that was a little bit higher than the average conductance on an undisturbed wall, so not part of a corner. So what we want to know is what's the total heat loss across the corner. And we can write this as the integration of the U value of the conductance at a certain point along our surface over the length of those surface. Now, Therm produced that result as um, average of this function. And we can write this as a U value, the average U value that Therm spits out over the length, because we walk along the X axis, the X coordinate is along the edge that we walk. So that's what we call the total length that we used here. Now at the same time, we actually didn't want to have that average value that already includes it. We want to know for future and for other corners that do the same. What is the actual difference between our standard U value, the normal one that we would use over those lengths of the uh, walls that we spool and match everything that is in addition into a C value that is our linear loss value in that we can then use for any occurrence of such a corner. So we see here we have two different totals and they are equal. So setting them against each other as equal, we can now then go ahead and isolate for C, which exactly shows what we explained before, that the C value is the difference between the average U value over this total length minus the simple U value. So basically just adding C to the simple solution will give us the total loss. So in our example, if we go back here, we will have to write then that our C value is first of all, the total loss that exists. So the total loss is defined by 0.7 uh, 158 as the conductance, the average conductance in the corner, multiplied with the length that we have here. And we use, we set the tag for both of those legs. And we can pick up the actual length, and you should check there that it's correct where you applied it. And you can see it's 72 inches, but because this is a BTUs per feet function here, we need to convert this inches into feet. Then we subtract the simple U value that we would use from the wall 
but also multiplied with the same length because we would not apply it here. This is already where we know how it works. We want to see how it works here in addition, what we are missing. And so multiplying the simplified U value with the same length of where we actually want to model gives us the difference that is our actual C value. So the C value then is defined as a linear loss that happens in this corner and can be added to this corner for each linear foot of the height of such a corner. And it's therefore given in BTUs per hour and linear feet per Fahrenheit. That's it. So I hope this gave you a little bit of an introduction of how you can use Therm for a C-value calculation. It gets a little bit more tricky when you have uh, offsets in your projection, like you have, for example, around windowsills. Uh, that's where the two lengths do not directly coincide. And I will cover that in an additional video coming forward.